Thank you for joining us. I'm at the Worldwide Christian Center Church in Pompano Beach, Florida, where the congregation is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Locally and nationally, the Worldwide Christian Center Church is known for its outspoken biblical stand on cultural, moral, religious, and political issues. Our guest today is the Reverend Dr. O'Neill Dozier, who is very actively supporting important causes in helping the poor, promoting education and family values, and so very much more, in addition to support for Israel. He'll share his sincere and politically incorrect views following these messages. Great day for the church. 25 years of service along with the end of the mortgage. And there is even more to the great moments, such as a new U.S. Congressman. Please welcome Congressman Black Allen West. that picture before I got gray hair. <laughs> so I really appreciate that a lot. Uh, it really is an honor to be here with each and every one of you today. From the bottom of my heart, from my wife Angela, from my daughters Aubrey and Austin, it's a special today to be here on your 25th anniversary and of course the day that you're going to burn that mortgage, which is, I tell you, that's a liberating experience. That I <laughs> now, uh, you know, it, it's a funny thing. I guess everywhere I go, I got cameras and stuff like that following me around nowadays. But that does not change the fact that you really have to speak what is on your heart Amen. and what is the truth, as Amen. it has been laid on my heart. And you know, it's so funny. I, God bless Sister Doja. I mean, Sister Doja started calling me about three days ago. <laughs> what are you going to talk about? <laughs> I need to know what scripture. We need to put that up there. And I keep trying to tell Sister Doja, I said, look, you just got to wait. You know, sometimes, you know, it's just not the right time. I mean, I can't tell you what is going to be told to me. And so finally, this morning when I had my normal Sunday morning five-mile run, you know, it hits you what you got to say. And so as soon as I got back in the house, I'm sitting there, I'm sweating. I said, Sister Doja, okay, here's the deal. This is what we're going to talk about. These are two scriptures. She said, okay, thank you, brother. You're relieved of your duties now. <laughs> so, you know, building upon the theme that you have here, our church preaching the word and impacting the culture. And you say that it came from the second Timothy of chapter 4, verses 2 through 5. And when I uh, went into Webster's Dictionary this morning, it said that impact means to have an effect on but what I want to do is change that just a little bit. Because I think it's something different from the word impact, Pastor. And to the members here of this great church, and to the guests that are here, and to this incredible choir. Y'all don't want to see me dance, so I'm with the brother over here. But it is a new mission that you have. Your mission is how are you to influence a nation? Because when I looked up the word influence, influence says a power to affect others, the power to produce an effect because of wealth, position, or ability. So in looking at that, I want to turn first and foremost to 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, where it reads, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal the land. The New Testament reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 10, and then verse 12. And it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy 
but have obtained mercy. In verse 12, having you conduct honorable, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, observe and glorify God in the day of visitation. Those are the base verses that I want you to think about as we go forward today in this very short presentation. Because I want to ask you, why is it so vital for you all sitting here today to have influence in this nation? And I go back to several quotes from our founding fathers. The general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. John Adams. The religion which has introduced civil liberty is the religion of Christ and his apostles. This is genuine Christianity, and to this we owe our free constitutions of government. Noah Webster. We have no government armed with the power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams. Thank you. Dear Father, we thank you for, we thank you for this part of our service. This is the, this is the mortgage burning. With us now is Reverend O'Neill Dozier. It's a real pleasure and a privilege to have it's you on the show. You, it's been a while and finally we have the honor of having you on the program, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to begin by asking you a little bit about your personal background, where you grew up, what brought you to this day, to where we are now. Well, I grew up in South Carolina and South Florida. I was born in South Carolina, but I was raised here, right here in Pompano Beach, Florida. This is where I was raised. I attended high school here. I also attended uh, John Marshall Law School in Atlanta, Georgia. That's where I obtained my, uh, my doctors of jurisprudence. Later, I attended the ITC, the International Theological Seminary School in Atlanta, Georgia. And of course, I have a total of 20 years in the United States Army. Four years on active duty, 16 years in the active Army Reserves. Um, I am a, a Vietnam vet. Um, I served some time in, uh, in Germany. And um, I guess, uh, gee, let's see, what else can I say about myself? Except that I have been pastoring for the last 25 years. And right now you're celebrating the 25th anniversary yes. of your Christian Center. Tell us a little bit about this institution, this church. Uh, it was formed um, uh, for the primary purpose of spreading the gospel, of course. Little did I know that the church would take on a different image. The image that it took on was that kind of a church that would fight the cultural war. There's a cultural war that we're fighting. That is to say, our church preaches a lot on keeping the baby in the womb until the baby is born. And also, we teach and preach against homosexuality and against same-sex marriages. In other words, we're sort of a family-oriented church. That's what we do. As a result of teaching and preaching on the cultural mandates, um, doing that lured the politicians towards me because they wanted to use what I was teaching and preaching. You know, they wanted to use me in their campaigns. Precisely that, sir. That's what they did. Now, I am a strong believer that the reason we are fighting the war on terror is because we have neglected the cultural war. Sir, forgive me for interrupting you, but I'd like to dwell on another matter. You brought up politicians. I understand that whereas you were the darling of 
so many political campaigns and so many individuals invited you everywhere to the White House and so forth. All of a sudden, they decided to distance them, themselves a little from you for political, politically correct interests. Please tell us a little about that. Well, they distanced themselves from me primarily because of my comments against Islam. In 2006, in July 2006, I made a comment against Islam. I was on a radio program and I was asked my opinion of Islam. And there I stated that I believe that Islam is a very dangerous and evil cult based upon the teachings of the Quran and the Hadith. And when I said that, there was a news reporter who didn't like me quite well. Uh, he thought that I was a dangerous man because of what I taught and preach. So therefore, he wanted me off of the Judicial Nominating Commission. You see, I was appointed to the Judicial Nominating Commission by Governor Jeb Bush. Uh, that is to say, I helped him pick his judges in the state of Florida. So this same reporter asked me whether or not my comment was the same feelings of President Bush and Jeb Bush. 